Hello, I'm Philip Wade, Country Living with the Wades. Today I want to talk to you about repairing your motor on your club car or your Easy Go. Mine is a 2003 club car with a 48 volt uh, motor. My motor got stuck and I figured out a way to, to repair it without having to beat it out and everything else. So, before you remove your motor, before you do anything, before you buy that high speed motor to speed it up, please watch this video. It will probably save you a lot of heartache and a lot of money. See you later. Okay, this is going to be a real problem. My armature is stuck in the transaxle right there. It will not come out. I've tried spraying liquid wrench and other products on there. I've let them set for several days. I've uh, tried everything that I know without damaging this to, to break it loose and get it out. Now I have to figure out something better. As it is, I've already broken the bearing retainer uh, trying to take the motor off. Uh, the bearing is a press fit onto this part and the bearing retainer holds it tight into the end bell. You can see my retainer is broken, my bearing retainer. It's broken right where the screws go. I've just sort of set it in place. You see the little fingers that come and touch the bearing? That's just to touch the outside bearing, not to touch the uh, seal anywhere. And I think the biggest reason for that is you get so much uh, carbon um, particles coming off the brushes as they wear down that you could actually get something in there and start to break the seal open, cause the bearing to go out early. Yep, that's it. All right, I found the breakdown from my motor. This is my motor. It's uh, whatever this model number is here. Uh, and this is, happens to be online at uh, Golf Cart Parts Direct. Uh, the motor part number right here was actually uh, on the label on the motor itself, so I was positive this is what I had. Uh, when I went to take my motor off, I did it just like all the vi other videos showed. You take the uh, bolts off right here, the, this bolt here on the bottom, you take your wires loose, uh, you grab your motor, you rock it back and forth and just slide it right back. And it said when you get ready to put your motor back in, make sure you apply the anti-seize lubricant to the spline because if you don't, the next time you go to take the motor off, it might be stuck and the only alternative is to beat it off. Well. I worked and worked on mine. I pried it. I did everything in the world. It would not come off. So finally, I got a small gap in between this part and this part. I got a pry bar in there, and I started trying to force it out. Uh, finally, it started to move. I put a bigger pry bar on there, and finally, it started to break loose and come out. And that's when I realized this part, the armature, the part that rotates, was still stuck. The spline and all was stuck in this part, the transaxle down here. My only alternative now is to do what the other videos said, which was to beat it off, except there's no way to beat it off. There's, you, there, you can't open this up and access the end of this to drive it off or anything like that. The only thing is, is you would have to take this full assembly apart, and hopefully then you would be able to get something to be able to drive it out. So being irritated with it, I decided I'm not touching it for a few days. I'm just going to let myself cool off, get caught up on some other projects, then I'll come back and take a look at it. And when I came back to take a look at it, I had to stop and ask myself, why was I taking the motor off? Because this wire was getting hot on A1, which meant that I needed to replace my brushes. I realized in the situation I was at, I could actually change the brushes out and put this part back on without taking this part off and just leave it there. And that's what this video was about. I was lucky that I stopped at the point where the only thing I had broken was this part number 13. Uh, excuse me, part number 13 right here. And this part number 13, when you go down to look at the list, it goes part number 11, part number 14. <clears throat> the uh, bearing, the uh, retainer bearing is not listed. There is no part number 13 here. You cannot buy it. I looked at other drawings where it's showing it as a part number 17, and part number 17, I'd slide down here, it's not showing. But on this particular diagram, it's listed as a part number 13. It's not available, you can't buy it. So this is the only part that I've actually broke. 
So I ended up manually making one. It's rather ugly, but it works, and you'll see it in the video. I bought a new brush assembly. The brushes um, and the bearing, because I bought the bearing in a bearing house, was about $7, counting tax and all. The brushes were about $25, counting tax and all. So grand total, I've got about $35 uh, invested in this uh, to do my repair, put everything back together, and it works. Please follow the video and see uh, what I did uh, to repair it and how, if, that, if you come into this kind of problem, how you can stop before you break everything up and tear something up uh, and uh, go ahead and change out your brushes. As long as your commutator is in pretty good shape, then you don't have any problem at all. Change out your brushes, put everything back together, and go about your business. This is a piece I'm making in here. It's, I know it's really, really ugly right now, and it's going to stay ugly. Uh, my holes will be lined up about, about like this. I'll trim it back to where it's just touching just the uh, bearing outer ring. Okay, I took those little burrs off. Most of the burrs, there's a little burr right there. I wanted to make sure I had it sitting flat and I didn't want any of the burrs from when I was uh, grinding the outside edges off there, rounding that up a little bit on the grinder to keep it from sitting flat. So I'm gonna put a screw back in. Let's so get this screw started. Maybe a little bit easier said than done here. Oh, no problem. Starts right in there. So, here's my mark. Barely see it now. Just about taking it off. Right here. That's where I want the center to be. Right there. So now I'm going to set it over on this side. I'm going to get a punch and punch a center line through there. I couldn't find a punch of the right size. This is held nice and tight in place. So I'm going to sacrifice a drill bit. The drill bit fits just nicely, just a little bit of clearance in the hole. So I know. When I hit it, it will be centered. Hole is actually a larger diameter than what the screw is. All right, it's down to the bottom. Let's see what we got here. Get you out. Right there's my mark right there Put a little spot on it the magic marker I mean with a sharpie yeah I'll take it over the drill press and I'll drill that hole and I'll tap it all right I've drilled and tapped both holes now that's the one I just did it's uh, deburred all the edges on it so it should sit flush just see how it's going to set. Screw in here. One started. Let me get the other one started. Well, the holes line up pretty well. I don't have a bearing in there right now. So let me take it out and uh, put the bearing in. The, uh, this is the used bearing, by the way. I haven't uh, put the new one in. Let me get the new one. Here's the new one. That's what type it is right there. Can you see it? It's 6203-2Z 
C3. I think I paid uh, $7 for the new bearing at a local bearing supply house. So this is the old one, this is the new one. You should just tap in. There. There. I've already cleaned the seat, so I know the bearing is fully seated. I don't know if you can see. Right there, I do have a little bit of a lip poking out of the bearing still. The bearing is a little bit thicker than what the depth of the hole is. So with the Bearing retainer pressing tight against this, it keeps it pressed tight against this end cap. Okay, I'll examine it. I'm pressing against the end racing here. I'm not touching the, the seal anywhere. So all my force is just on the outer racing. This is a little bit larger than the original piece. Put the original piece on top so you can see. Now let me explain. I've got some flats on each side because originally I was going to do it just like this. I cut the outside out to, to match the shape of this, but then I realized I was going to be very, very close on the, on the metal where my threads were. So then I actually rotated it so that this would be here. But these flats are based off the original design here, which really didn't mean anything at all. Okay, now the question is going to be, Am I going to be able to put this on? I think what I'm going to do is I'll put a socket in here to the, that's just the same size as this uh, inner erasing. As I try to put it on, I'll use these long screws to keep this lined up. Now the bearing has a little bit of a, of a taper just on the edge, a little bit of a chamfer. So what I'll, hopefully I'll be able to get it started in there, get it lined up a little bit there and tap it with a socket there, tap the socket to sort of drive it down onto the shaft. We'll see how it works. I've got the new brush kit already installed. I just bought the brushes. I didn't buy this part right here, just the brush, just the brushes. And they come up with the wires and the and the studs already attached. So the object is to get this back up on this, get the bolts in on that end without damaging the brushes that I have here. One option may be to go ahead and just take these two, these two bolts loose right here and then put that back in. I think that may be the best thing to do. So there, I've taken the two little screws out. This is loose. So now I can put this part in, leave this loose, and then work, this, work these brushes back uh, onto the commutator. All right, so I was able to put that back in, get the, the, get the uh, three screws, uh, 716 screws back in, 716 head, and get the old half inch head down here in the bottom. Now, to do this, you have to bring it in over the springs and it just slides right in, especially if you have all this loose right here. Now I've got to put all this back in uh, so that these go over the commutator. I'm 
there. It's in place. Need to tighten it up a little bit. So finishing getting the brush assembly back in uh, screwed in place. I uh, tightened it up, but I'll, I'll show you real quick. Uh, what I had to do was to make sure that I had the long wires on the outside so that they wouldn't touch the rotor. The only thing that rotates in here is just this part right here. The rest of it doesn't rotate. There's nothing moving back in the area where this is here. And the brushes themselves, you can see they come up pretty close. I had to really center this pretty well and then offset it just a little bit, just jiggle it, offset a little bit so that I could push the brush down and make it click. Because those brushes are the full length right there. So hopefully now I'll be able to get the end bell housing on with the bearing. We'll see how this goes. So guys, look, if uh, you just need to change your brushes, the easiest thing to do is just to go ahead, uh, take your jacket up, take the, the pressure off of the rear springs, take the wheels off on this side, take the end bell off, and then now you've got access to this in here. If all you need to do is just change your brushes out, replace your brushes and your brush wiring, you can do this uh, without actually removing the motor, especially if it's stuck. You never want to try and beat the motor out if the, if the rotating part is good and not a problem. Just uh, take the end bell off, remove the four outside bolts, the long ones. Uh, those, those are the ones that hold the, the end bell on. Um, take the two screws loose that hold the bearing retainer on. Take the end bell off and then you've got access to your brushes right here where you can do your change out your brushes without taking the motor off. And uh, if all you have to do is do that, that's a whole lot cheaper than $540 or whatever it is for a replacement motor for these. I'm going to try and get the newest, get this assembly back in here like this. First thing I've got to do is get the bolts lined up with the holes. And you see how that is there. I've got uh, the holes are parallel across the top level with each other. And at the bottom, that's approximately the right place. Now you can also see maybe I'm already touching the end of the shaft right there. So I need to get the bolts in there. Maybe they're long enough so I can get something started, get a little pressure on there, and it'll help be able to uh, get this in. Well, regretfully, the bolts aren't quite long enough to be able to hold this uh, and start to pull, put a little pressure on the bearing, but it does keep it lined up straight because they have to go through those long holes. These bolts are so long. These bolts are so long that it's a little bit loose. But you can see the bearing there. So now I've got to get a socket and see if I can use a socket to hit just on this inside racing and drive it in. Uh, a dowel pin would be nice, a large, a large uh, dowel, uh, maybe a one inch dowel. And I could use that for a driver so that way I wouldn't damage the bearing. See if I can start to tap it in, get it on the uh, shaft. In there. I did find a little piece of dowel rod I cut off. I'm going to try and use that to hit this in with a hammer and see if I can get it started. I don't have enough hands. So, five or six taps. It is starting to go in. And it feels like it's going in pretty straight. I'm not hitting it hard at all, but I am having to be you know, solid with it. All right, yeah, it's definitely on the bearing shaft now. I mean, it's, the bearing's definitely on the shaft now, but everything's getting more solid. It's not, oh, that screw's starting to go in a little bit. Maybe this one too, let's see, that one, a little. Ah, they're just long enough to start to help pull a little bit. Let me see if I can go on a little bit further with that. All right, let's see, I've got, what else I can do here? I can tap this in a little bit deeper. It's going on. That's the good part. I was able to get the screws started. I don't have any pressure on them right now. Pretty good. 
good here. I'm just gonna smell it up a little bit. Okay, so these are starting to snug up just a little bit. So, a little bit snug, not tight, but just a little snug. I hear a little pop in there. I know that it shifted just a little bit. Oh yeah, hear that little pop. Let's see if I can. Well, you can hear it here. There, that little pop. That's the bearing slipping forward. And the shaft coming on down a little bit tighter. Another one. Yep. I do opposites just a little bit on each one as you go around. This works just like a press, just like I'm pressing the bearing on the on the shaft. And the other one again. And I'm not putting much pressure on the bolts. See, it's coming on down. I still have a little bit of a gap there. So I know everything is still going together. See, I'm not doing much of a rotation here at all. Let me take this little extension out. Might make life a little easier here. Come on, get on there. Another little pop, yeah. Bearing's still going on. This one's looser than the others. tapping again. Tap on the housing itself this time. Yeah, you can see the shaft is now a little bit this side of the bearing, so it's the shaft, the end of the shaft has come all the way through. tapping it again. The housing part, not the bearing because the shaft's already beyond the bearing. Just to relieve a little bit of pressure on the, this aluminum housing, if there is any. There is a little bit, I know, because uh, there is a little bit of tension on there because I know I'm drawing it in with these uh, long housing bolts. That's, look how loose that is now. Snug that one good. Do this one on the opposite side. That's a little bit snug. And the bottom one down here, see what it's like. Oh, it's very loose. Yeah, I'm down to maybe an eighth of an inch gap. So, go ahead and finish this out. Tap it in again. Yeah, before I started this, I went online to look at videos on how to remove the motor just to see if there was anything that might surprise me. I 
didn't really see anything. And I did it, you know, just like it said, the first thing I did was I put it in tow, I disconnected the batteries, and I disconnected the uh, wires. Uh, and then I removed the uh, speed indicator. Okay, so it's ready to tap again. So I have a little bit of a gap there. Every time they get pretty snug, I want to stop and tap on the housing right on the outside of the bearing there on either side just to make sure that I'm taking some of the pressure off plus the little bump helps anything that's under pressure. Gap. I can barely get my fingernails in the gap now, so it's really doing real well. Pop it again. these long bolts long, one thing about these long bolts like this these are bolts that are designed to stretch a little bit so that they keep attention all the time on there yeah that one's good and tight that one's good and tight that one's good and tight okay so now I guess I'm ready for my magnetic speed pickup and hooking up the rest of the wires. We'll see how this works. Next thing you want to be sure of is you see this little ring right here? This is the ring that has the magnets in it for the magnetic pickup for the speed sensor. And it has a, a large brass piece on one side and it has a thin brass piece on the other side. The large brass, brass piece protrudes a little bit, and that's the side that goes against the bearing. Now, it should fit snug. If you have to tap it or something, be careful what you tap it with. Make sure that it goes on there good. Let's see if I've got something I can tap this with here. Just slightly tap. clearance it needs there. It looks like it's about flush now. I'm just using the end of this dowel rod, which is kind of messed up now, but it's still pretty flat. That's what I was using to tap that on with. It looks like it's done pretty well. So see, it doesn't touch anything else. It's just right on the shaft itself. Now the magnetic speed pickup in this piece right here, this just clips in. It just snaps in place. But it has a pickup in there, and it counts the revolutions that the magnet makes. And that's how it determines the speed feedback. And it gives a signal from that going back into the controller. So I'm gonna, it only goes in one way. Where's the little snap piece at? There it is. just pushes in it goes completely in that's it that's all there is to it and I think there was some kind of little clip here um, to hold uh, the wires I'll have to see if I find it hopefully I didn't lose it somewhere in all this mess but anyway guys if this works this saves me about uh, $550 just if I could have gotten the motor out by itself and replaced it uh, the other thing is, if I had to 
uh, manually some kind of way beat uh, the uh, rotor out of the transaxle section, it probably would not have come out and I would have been looking at replacing the entire transaxle. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's informative to you because uh, if it works, it saved me a lot of money.